بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم میں ہوں سبی کازمی ناظرین پاکستان اور ترکی یک جان اور دو کالے بگر میں ان ملکوں کو کہوں تو یہ کم نہیں پاکستان اور ترکی کی فرینڈشپ محبت پیار برد ہوڈ یہ آج کا نہیں یہ دہائیوں پر بلکہ سنچریوں پر یہ مشتمل ہے پاکستان آٹومن خلافت کے دور سے ترکی کے ساتھ ہے اور ترکی پاکستان کی ہر مشکل گھڑی میں ہمیشہ ساتھ رہا ان کے جھنڈے کے صرف رنگ نہیں ملتے لال اور سبز لیکن ستارہ اور چاند انہیں آپس میں ملاتا ہے اسی طرح پاکستانی زبان اردو میں ترکش کے لفظ استعمال ہوتے ہیں اس کے علاوہ پاکستان اور ترکی کے کھانوں میں اگر آپ دیکھیں ان کا کزین تو وہ بھی مشترک ہے ہم دونوں کی زبان میں یکسانیت ہم کے کلچر میں اور سب سے بڑھ کر ہم ایک مذہب کی لڑی میں پروئے ہوئے ہیں آپ یقین کریں کہ دنیا جہان میں ٹرکش لوگ پاکستانیوں سے بہت محبت کرتے ہیں اور اسی طرح پاکستانی لوگ بھی اپنی جان ان پر نچھار کرتے ہیں دوسری طرف آپ طیب اردگان پاکستان کا وزٹ کرنے کے لیے چودہ فروری کو آ رہے ہیں اس سے پاکستان اور ترکی ایک نئے دور میں جانے لگے ہیں ترکی پاکستان اور ملیشیا مل کر ایک نیا چینل کھولنے کا ارادہ کرتے ہیں جو کہ میڈیا کی دنیا میں ایک انقلاب ہوگا جس میں انشاءاللہ پروفٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کی زندگی پر اور اسلام کی اصل تعلیمات مغرب تک پہنچانے کے لیے بہت کام کیا جائے گا آنے والے دنوں میں پاکستان ایران ترکی اور چائنا اور رشیا اگر یہ مل کر ایک سٹرانگ بلاک بناتے ہیں تو پھر یہ دنیا کے لیے ایک پیرالل سسٹم کی طرح ہوگا کہ جس میں ایک بہترین نظام بھی نظر آ سکتا ہے او آئی سی میں عمران خان صاحب نے ملیشیا میں جو کانفرنس میں انہوں نے شرکت نہیں کی اور جس کا انہوں نے برملا اعتراف کیا جو کہ ایک بڑے لیڈر کی بڑی نشانی ہے انہوں نے یہ کہا کہ میں اس میں اس لیے نہیں آیا کہ ہاں یہ لوگ سمجھ رہے تھے کہ ہم شاید کوئی ایک پیرالل پلیٹ فارم بنا رہے ہیں جس میں مسلم عمر ڈیوائڈ ہوگی لیکن ایسا ہرگز نہیں تھا دوسری طرف سعودی عرب کا بھی پاکستانیوں کو گھر بھیجنے کا جو سننے میں ایک دھمکی تھی یا اس طرح کی بات تھی جس نے عمران خان کو رکنے پر مجبور کیا وہ بھی ایک اچھا اچھی بات نہیں تھی مسلم عما کو مل کر اپنے مسائل اکٹھے کرنے ہوں گے میں اکثر ٹرین میں سفر کرتا ہوں تو میرے ساتھ ایک ٹرین میں ایک ٹرکش نوجوان جو کہ میلبرن یونیورسٹی میں پی ایچ ڈی کر رہے ہیں آنکھوں سے وہ محروم ہیں نابینا ہیں ویسے تو میں نے آج ٹرکش کونسل میں جو کونسلر ہیں ان سے انٹرویو کا ٹائم لیا تھا لیکن آپ یقین کریں کہ میرا دل چاہ رہا تھا کہ انٹرویو اس نوجوان کا کروں جو آنکھوں سے محروم ہے لیکن اس کی بسارت اس کی جو وزڈم ہے وہ اس سے بہت زیادہ ہے روزانہ ہم آپس میں بات چیت کرتے ہیں انٹرنیشنل ریلیشنس پہ انٹرنیشنل افیئرس پہ چرکی پاکستان اور پوری دنیا پہ آج وہ میرے ساتھ اسٹوڈیو میں موجود ہیں ایک بریک کے بعد ان کے پاس چلتے ہیں میرے ساتھ رہیں ملتے ہیں ایک بریک کے بعد ویلکم بیک فرام دا بریک جی میرے ساتھ اوہان اسٹوڈیو میں موجود ہے ٹرکش ہیں آئے ان سے بات کرتے ہیں اوہان تھینک یو سو مچ فار گیونگ می دا ٹائم ٹو ڈے برادر ہاؤ یو فیلنگ سبھی تھینکس فار انوائٹنگ می ٹو یور پروگرام اوہان ٹیل می سم تھنگ یو یو کانٹ سی اوبیسلی یو نو یو ار بورن آئی واز بورن لائک دیٹ آئی واز بورن ایز اے بلائنڈ پرسن آئی ایم ڈائگنائزڈ وتھ لائبرز اپٹک نیوروپیتھی دیٹس the name of my disease. Yep. How do you get so much interest in international politics? And when I'm talking to you every day, I just told my, my viewers, like in the train, we discuss a lot of wisdom. How do you do? Like what? Well, first of all, I study social science. Um, I have done my undergrad at the University of Melbourne. I've done my honours at the University of Melbourne. Now I am doing my PhD at the University of Melbourne and I am soon, well in a f- f- fixed time, going to submit my PhD. Now, Turkish Prime Minister, sorry, President, is going to Pakistan. So there's a lot of overwhelming um, response from the other side. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, uh, people want to know people-to-people relationship, like Turkish people, Pakistani people, how are they like interconnected and okay. culturally? Well, first and foremost, when you look at the history, Pakistan and Turkey had the long-term positive relationship for decades. Now, this even goes back to the time of the Ottoman Empire before the independence of Pakistan. Now, during the war of independence in Turkey, which happened in nine, early 1920s, Uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah was supporting Turkey's independence when Turkey was fighting against the imperial forces. And later, when Pakistan became independent, I think it was in 1947 or 1948, I can't exactly remember. 47, that. yes. 1947. Um, Turkey began to have positive international relationships with Pakistan as well. I think... 
of course, religion is a factor, but there are two other factors that really draw Pakistan and Turkey together. Now, unlike any other Muslim countries, well, many other Muslim countries, Pakistan and Turkey, they fought against imperial powers. They fought, like yes. Pakistan fought against its independence, like when it was under India, fought against the British. Yeah. Um, Turkey also fought against the British when you look at it. They always say Turkey always fought against the Greeks. It wasn't really the Greeks. When Greeks invaded Turkey, they were backed up by Britain and France. So when you look at both Turkey and Pakistan, they are historically similar. They fought for their independence, unlike many other Muslim countries. Another factor that really draws Turkey and Pakistan together is their cultural similarities. Now, when you look at Pakistan, like it was under the time in the time of India, it was ruled by Muslim empires, and some of them are Turkish empires, such as the Ghazni, the, the, the Ghazni Empire, and the Empire and the Mongols, which was founded by Bahadur, Bahadur uh, Babur, I think Babur. So that's my mistake, Babur. King Babur of the Mughal. King, King Babur of the Mongol. He was the son of Timbaland. Yes. Timur Leng, Timur Leng, like, yes. Yeah, Timur Leng. Yes. He, Timur Leng, the one who couldn't walk properly, his leg yes. was still limp, yes. A psychopath, some people say. Yes, he's a psychopath, yes, he's referred, he was a very brutal person. And uh, because India was ruled by those empires, uh, therefore they passed on their culture to Pakistanis, and therefore when you look at it, we have Pakistan and Turkey, we have similar cuisines in some ways, like we both have the halwa, Yes. We have kebabs, we have pilavs as well. <laughs> true, absolutely true. Yes. Now, coming to the, the now, recently the, there was a summit in Malaysia, which was uh, Mahathir Mohammed invited Imran Khan as Prime Minister of Pakistan to join it mm -hmm. because they were trying to to build a media station together where they can show Prophet Muhammad's life and mm -hmm. the true teachings of Islam to mm -hmm. the world, which Imran Khan couldn't go because uh, the Saudis friends said not to go. What do you think of that? Well, I think that the Saudis kind of like, if, I, if, if the rumors are true, they threatened Imran Khan, saying to him, if he goes to this conference, they will send the 5 million Pakistani workers back to Pakistan or they will lose their jobs. That's, that's yes. what they said, I think, if I yep. remember correctly, if the rumors are true. That's what, in fact, Tayyip Erdogan has stated as well. Yes, okay. Well, if what is being said true, what Saudi Arabia is doing is not acceptable. A country that is governed by human rights, a country that is governed by a constitution, should not use any minorities, like those minorities may be, it's, be that country's own citizens, or they may be a migrant group who may be just be in that country for the sake of working or for the sake of making money. What I'm trying to say here is that a country that has a proper constitution, proper law, and has proper division of powers like executive, um, judiciary, and judicial, judicial executive, and legislative powers, like if, if, if the country really has, divides those powers in a proper way, should not really be doing that to minorities or migrant groups. Yes, true. This really demonstrates to us that Saudi Arabia is using is using certain people or certain groups as hostage. Yes. Yeah. Brother Ohan, you have you have a you have a knowledge of all these international affairs. When the time comes when we need all Muslim ummahs, all these countries to sit together unanimously agreed on certain things like for example Kashmir or Palestine or these why don't they agree? Okay, why they are not agree? First of all, um, when you look at it, every country, including Turkey, Malaysia, Pakistan, Iran, and Saudi Arabia, yes, they call themselves Muslims, they say we are Muslims, but at the same time, every country has its own agenda. Every country yes. wants the best for itself. And every country uses religion for its own benefit. Even countries, even Muslim countries that say, that claim to be secular, even they want to use religion when it suits their purpose or when it suits their interests. True. So, 
Muslim countries, when you look at it in depth or when you look at it closely, they are using religion to benefit their own national agendas or, or their own nationalism. And that's why when you look at it, sometimes certain Muslim countries, well, this is not just with Muslim countries, this it's is general, like in, in the world general, general so, even, yeah. even with Christian countries, even yes. with Europe, like when you look at France and Germany, their yeah. interests are not always, they don't always share the same interests. In fact, their interests can contradict one another. Yeah. What about the politics? Like, you know, you, you, you mentioned a fair few times about Pakistani politics. You, you knew a fair bit of things. Nawaz Sharif's corruption cases, yes, Imran okay. Khan's government. What do you think of all these when you hear? these okay. sort of things okay now first and foremost I do not want people to misunderstand me I am a Turkish person first of all I'm I'm an Australian citizen with Turkish ancestry I'm also a Turkish citizen as well yeah so therefore what I'm saying are my personal views now I said this because what I believe is that Pakistanis have the power they should have the power to decide their own country's future. I am saying this because I'm not giving my personal opinions to say to Pakistanis, oh, you should do this and you should do that. That's not my place. At the end of the day, the Pakistanis themselves will decide. Yeah, but what's your opinion? Like when you hear these news, country. corruption cases okay. or Imran Khan's new government, you, you heard that when Imran yes. Khan took power, I think we had a discussion once yes, very long ago. So, so what, what do you think now? Like what's... What I think about Imran Khan, well, first and foremost, he is a person who knows the Western world. Now, it's, it is very necessary to have politicians who also know the East and the West, or he, he, may not be, he may not entirely know everything, but at least he has an idea about both the East and the West. And second, he's al he was already wealthy. We all know that. We all know that. He's not a greedy person. We all know that he's there to try to, to do the best for Pakistan. When you look at his history, like when he got divorced from his wife, I think he left all the money and property to his wife. Yes. This really demonstrates to people that he's not a greedy person, compared to many other politicians in Pakistan. Now, my impression is that if Imran Khan is successful, he can definitely do a lot of good for Pakistan. But there's one problem. Yeah. From what I can understand, the people in his party, they are still atavistic, like they have this like still traditional nepotism, mm. they have this corporate mentality. Very good. They are not ready to change. I think this is another factor that's really hindering Imran Khan from proceeding with his new reforms. And, f and from developing Pakistan. Mm. Now, I have heard three things about Imran Khan, like, like taking the mansions or expensive houses of former politicians and turning them into houses to mm. foster the homeless people. Yeah, homeless shelters, yes. Home shelter the homeless people. Yep. I think this is really a positive action. Because when you look at it, unfortunately, this is the case in many Eastern countries, you have very rich people who are living extreme luxurious lives, but they, they are not taking care of the poor. But what Imran Khan is doing at the moment, he's given the message saying, as a state or as a government, I'm trying to redeem that. I'm trying to help the poor. Yes, beautiful. Now, uh, Tayyip Erdogan, when he will visit to Pakistan, you think that both countries will enter into the new era of the relationship, brotherhood? What do you think of that? I think Tayyip Erdogan's visit to Pakistan will definitely contribute to the international relationship between Pakistan and Turkey. It's a good start, but it is not enough. Everyone should know that governments come and go, but the states are permanent. States yes. will also be there. So, both Pakistani governments and both the Pakistani and Turkish people need to work on this relationship. Okay. It's not a one-way relationship. It constantly needs to be worked on and it constantly needs to be developed. I believe that both Pakistan and Turkey can contribute to one another's economic, social, political and cultural developments. <laughs>
ویلکم بیک فرم ناظرین آپ نے آج کا پروگرام دیکھا آپ نے اوہان کی باتیں سنی پاکستان اور ترکی کے درمیان بائی لیٹرل ریلیشن شپ پیپل ٹو پیپل گورنمنٹ ٹو گورنمنٹ آگے بڑھے گا تو اس میں دونوں ملکوں کی عوام کا فائدہ ہوگا جب ٹریڈ بڑھے گی آپس میں سوشو اکنامک ریلیشن شپ بڑھیں گے پولیٹیکل جیو ریلیشن شپ بڑھیں گے تو ان سے لوگوں کی زندگیاں آسان ہوں گی بہت سی ایسی چیزیں ہیں جو ترکی پاکستان کے لیے یا پاکستان ترکی کے لیے کر سکتا ہے وہ چیزیں اب کھلیں گی اسلامی ملک ہونے کے ناطے اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ ہمارا پیار اور محبت صدیوں کی ہسٹری ہے اسے ان مزید آگے بہتر کرنا ہوگا ٹیم سبھی کازمی کو پروڈیوسر جمیل حسین کے ساتھ اگلے پروگرام تک لے اجازت دیں خدا حافظ